My family, I greet you. Welcome to another one. You're in truth and love the church with your brother Joseph. So in this video, we're strictly going to be speaking the truth as it is. All right. So recently, we have actually realized that in the Christian community, there's been a rise of, you know, young ministers who say that the Lord Jesus has called them into the office of the apostolic. All right. Um, though some of them are actually, you know, Working in the correct path. We have some few individuals who have actually charted their own course to actually say that they've been called to root out falsehood and all the like, you know, attacking fathers, saying a lot of stuff, especially things like this. I don't know about the United States, but in Africa, most of what we call prophetic is, is, is a charade. Christianity is dying in Nigeria. It will take Puritans. Puritans. People accuse us. Why is it that we are not collaborating with other young ministers? Let me answer it today. We have seen them in the spirit. I want to be on God's side. When that confusion came in the body of Christ, some strange fellows rose up and began to talk about miracle money. They were actually, they, they, they need psychiatric attention. <laughs> I think the Bible is a mathematical book. It has its own logic. And except the Holy Spirit opens your eyes, you come out a heretic. That's why there were there were there were places where they bond people. Those days, when you start going the way of error, it means there's a spirit whispering to you. And it was to Melchizedek that Abraham gave tithes. And I hope you know Melchizedek is eternal, was not created, cannot be destroyed. It means in heaven you will still give tithes because his, priest, his priesthood remains. Ele we know something is talking to you and if we can prove from the bible that it's not the holy ghost they, they put you there and just they touch it that your kind should not dwell in the christian community a lot of hypocrisy so i just want to share with you what apostle johnson Suleiman actually said you know concerning these apostles who come out here and start lying um you know living a false life, faking things, and yet trying to create this image that, you know, they live holy lives, they preach a message of holiness and the like. So let's just get into the video. We're just going to be breaking it down so that you actually find out the truth for yourself so that you know that, you know, you are hating all these other pastors and preachers for no reason. This person is actually lying to you, you know. Divert your focus from the Lord Jesus Christ to himself, you know. Taking the sheep from other ministers so that he can appear to be the only one who's truly sent from God. Yet, if you actually take a closer look, you are being deceived. So let's listen. Have you seen people lying and, and speaking in tongues? God. It is God. It is God. It is God that is opening. God is exposing. God is cleaning this church. Let me tell you, if you want to deceive this younger generation, eh, if you want to deceive them, let me just tell you how to deceive them. Just come out and preach holiness. Senate is dying in Nigeria. It will take Puritans. Puritans. People accuse us. Why is it that we are not collaborating with other young ministers? Let me answer it today. We have seen them in the spirit. I want to be on God's side. <laughs> Church. It's time for God. Yes, come with a whip to prune the church. I think the Bible is a mathematical book. It has its own logic. And except the Holy Spirit opens your eyes, you come out a heretic. That's why there were there were there were places where they bond people. Those days. When you start going the way of error, it means there's a spirit whispering to you. And it was to Melchizedek that Abraham gave tithes. And I hope you know Melchizedek is a tanner was not created, cannot be destroyed. It means in heaven you will still give tithes. Because his, priest, his priesthood remains. We know something is talking to you. And if we can prove from the Bible that it's not the Holy Ghost, they, they put you there and just they touch it. That your kind should not dwell in the Christian community. He's returning the candlestick back to where it was. He's returning the candlestick back to where it was. Let the church return and cry on the altar. As he's doing that, you see lies. Last born for long. And because I was the last born, if people get angry, I will cry. Because then even when I get angry, I will still cry. <laughs> so I had to look for a way of survival. That was when I started lying. I started exploring lying. And it came to a point where a spirit of a lying spirit 
invaded my life. It was so powerful that on April Fool, I sent my father to the market and a boy of 13 was so skilled. I sent him to the market. But the skill was there. And even when I gave my life to Christ, that ability was stronger than the anointing that was upon my life. And for the first time in my life, I saw Satan in my dream. And he came to me to plead with me that I need your help. Yes, that's where I get this thing that I teach you. Yeah, it, it, sometimes it takes 24 hours too. You wait on the scriptures with tongues until the opener of eyes now comes to take the skills. Then they will give you an entrance to see the things that mortal men are in a hurry and they never get to see. Oh, I can pray for 18 hours with my back on my bed. You are not like me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like you. If you know the things that come at me in the realm of the spirit, sometimes you'll be in prayers for three days. In those days, I don't study the Bible. I study the Bible when there's peace. When there's a war in the spirit, for you can see me for seven days, I'm speaking in tongues. But when we finish with that war, then I come back. As he's doing that, you see exaggeration. As you've seen that, you will see encounters that never happened. Jesus appeared to him in the toilet, appeared to him in the bathroom. My first angelic encounter was at the age of seven. I will never forget that. Then the second angelic encounter was at the age of 13. That was when I was taken to heaven for eight hours. All right. Then I saw my calling at the age of 13 that I was going to be a preacher. I saw people going to hell, including some of my relatives. For those of you that are Nigerians, there is uh, something we call National Youth Service, which is compulsory to serve the nation for one year. So my explanation for the compulsory National Service Program was an opportunity that God was giving me to find out what next for my life. So I began to fast and pray. That year I fasted for 264 days. And God didn't speak to me on that matter. I spoke about other matters, but he didn't speak on that matter. I rested a little for a few days. And on the 13th of January 2003, at home, I continued the fast. Prayed for four hours in the morning, went to church, prayed for two hours in church, and I was still feeling that I had not yet filled the requirement of prayer for that day. So I, I arranged with a friend, and we went to his house and began night vigil. By 1 a.m., um, the electricity was out and his house was in such a place where if the electricity goes out and the neighbors have electricity he, he can go and change the face in the garage so that there will be electricity in the building so he went to the garage to change the face and an angel of the Lord walked from the wall and began to read the scroll to me that's the first angelic encounter I had the scroll of my destiny. Wow, that's amazing. Maybe you went to the university at the age of seven. The Lord began to speak to me as I went to seek his face concerning what the future holds. So first point, the apostle is saying that the Lord revealed to him. Let's continue. The manifestation of God that is going to be seen in the church is that called judgment. Let me read to us his very words. So, family, what he is reading right now are the very words that he is claiming that they are from God. He said, judgment of all forms will be meted out on falsehood in the house of God. All forms of infiltration in the body of Christ in terms of deceptions and cover-ups will be exposed. So, I'm saying... That in the, from the next few weeks, we're in January, before January ends, you will start hearing 
news of several cover ups that they have people in church have successfully <laughs> done for several years that will explode. Just watch it. So we saw this video trending and it has been tagged as a prophecy confirmation with regards to the video which we have been seeing the documentary by BBC concerning Prophet T.B. Joshua. So on X, people are actually arguing, saying that, you know, we said it, we saw it happening. But there's another minister here who is saying that he is close to one of those young men who were in the interview and that he went to Apostle Arumis ministry for deliverance and counseling weeks back. And he's saying that it is that same young man who was in the documentary. And he's also alleging that they spoke about it yesterday, meaning on the 7th of January. So if you want to get access to this pastor, he's on Facebook. You can see his Facebook profile over there. So this is a man of God who's saying that he's close to one of those disciples. So when it comes to things like this, we can actually see that allegedly... The young minister, when he went for counseling, he reached out to the apostle, told him that he's going to be featured in a documentary. And we now have the apostle coming out to say that he's prophesying of what is going to be happening. And accurately went on to say that it is going to happen in January. And in the same January, we are seeing the documentary. I don't know. You make that make sense. Appear. This Jesus is always appearing to you and we don't see manifestation. You have seen Jesus more than 10 times and we are looking at your meeting. We don't see power. Jesus has appeared to you more than 10 times and we look at your meeting. It's full of rhetoric and diction and mastery of public speaking. No single power. I can tell you stories. I can show you places, spots where Jesus spoke to me audibly. If I take you to the north in Nigeria, Places where angels appear to me. I can take say, this, this. And they didn't come and disappear. They were there for three hours. Mm. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Jesus has appeared to me five times. Five times. Five times. I'm not talking about a vision. No. The one you see in the spirit. No. When you go deeper, you will not need to ask for power. Like this evening, I didn't ask for power. I can heal the sick. I don't need to ask, will you come? Will, no, no. Jesus sent me to you. Your leg, okay? Yes. Um. Now uh, we want to ask that the Lord will... Don't be afraid. Okay. I'm here. Yeah. Okay, I'm here. Don't worry. Can we pray that strength will come upon these legs now? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Okay, 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 it's alright, it's alright. Okay, let's walk. The Lord, the Lord. Remove it, let's remove it. Let's, let's try. Put your leg there. Jesus. Okay. If it pains you, I will stop. Yeah. If you feel the pain, let me know. I will stop. Okay. Oh, stick out. Okay. Take her back. So God wants to heal your ears. <laughs> Some people have never seen angel. They have not seen angel and mighty manifestations. If your so-called encounter does not line up with your manifestation, then you are a liar. Yeah. For you to say you have seen Jesus. Do you know what it means to see Jesus? You say you have seen Jesus. Everywhere you go, the dead must be rising. In every of your meetings, you must hear that the dead is rising. To see Jesus. Eh? These people, they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not scared though. I was calling on the Lord and Jesus Christ walked into my room. And when he walked into my room, he said, come with me. And my spirit left my body. I was still in that physical location. You with me? My spirit left my body and we went around Benway Stage on the tour. Went to a place and I was trying to describe the place where there was a grave and people revered the grave. People were still, you know, the grave was hallowed in the eyes of them. Uh, and I found out that it was the village of one of my pastors. 
Jesus took me there and Jesus pointed at the altar that was in that place which was built on a grave. Jesus pointed. And he cast it. Jesus, when he came to me, he was barefooted. So I was asking him, hey, master, how come you don't have shoes? Then that scripture came into my mind where God was speaking to Joshua and he told him that wheresoever the sole of thy feet shall tread upon, it shall be, it will be given to your possession. So we're going to possess land. So Jesus came bare feet and the scripture came to your head that wheresoever your feet shall tread, it given to you as a possession. So Jesus came to possess lands. Hence why Jesus was bare feet. Wait, hang on. I thought Jesus was the creator of the heavens and earth. So that means that the lands already belong to Jesus. I'm not sure I understand why Jesus is coming to take over lands that already belong to him. And let me tell you something. When we talk about false prophets, it's not about ministers who bear the title of prophet who. Because many people think it's those who say they are prophet A or prophet B that will censor and choose the ones who are genuine and choose the one who are fake. It's not about title. Anybody who preaches or leaves deception as a minister is a false prophet. This credential that the Bible gave there is that it said this false prophet, their job is to deceive many. So you can call yourself an apostle if there is no truth in your mouth. And if your life is fake, you are a false prophet. There are many people today who are exaggerating a lot of things that God is not saying or doing on the altar. They say they are apostles. They are also false prophets. False prophets are not only the ones who carry the title of prophets. There are many people today, they are preaching what they are not practicing. Hey, oh Jesus, somebody say you saw him. Hey, oh Jesus. Not the, you didn't even see the PA. You saw Jesus. <laughs> Not the PA, Jesus. How can you be lying like this? Lying through your teeth. I had to look for a way of survival. That was when I started lying. I started exploring lying. And it came to a point where a spirit of a lying spirit invaded my life. And even when I gave my life to Christ, that ability was stronger than the anointing that was upon my life. Jesus, Jesus appeared. When I hear such things, that, and you know we are we are prophets, you cannot lie. Ninety percent of this younger generation of prophets and apostles are liars. I, I, I see some of them. So when they just I just speak it once, I just hear clearly liar, liar. But the only way to 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 package the lie is to come with a mind with with a message of purity. You can fool me with those messages. Like they are fruits. You shall know them. Not those nonsense you are preaching. You can preach all those things. You can fool Gen Z. You can fool this younger generation. I comment, ah, this message. But when I look at your message and I see attack, I see fight, I see insult, it tells me what you are doing in the secret. Now, if you can be like this in public, you can do this in public. That means in the secret, you are a tiger. Head the apostle, my family. If you want to keep on being deceived, you know, keep on being deceived. My message is very clear concerning this brother who is always attacking fathers and the like. I told you, if he comes out to attack a particular father or to attack someone, I won't post it. That's what I told you. All right. And people have been taking that out of context. All right. But as uh, for those who just follow him, listen to the word he preaches. But when he start ve when he starts, uh, you know, veering off and starts talking about, you know, other people, insulting them, calling them fake and false and the like, please just don't listen to that part. All right. Just listen to what's beneficial to you. So like, share, comment and subscribe. What do you think about Apostle Johnson Suleiman's words? Tell me in the comments below. God bless you.